Thanks for being there. And no doubt, the conversation on tradition as part of our culture series has been most rewarding. Definitely. Africa, and indeed Nigeria, is celebrated all over the world for her rich culture and tradition. And that's exactly why we're talking about this today. And that's why we're here. And this is where we make progress with our guests and dig deeper into similarities and differences in culture and tradition. To answer our many questions, we still have Unilag's first female professor and third female professor of mass communication in the entire history of Nigeria, Professor Abigail Ogwezendisika. Well, Professor, thank you again. We know you're there. And um, we say congratulations for all the work that you've done. And you are really a pride of the female gender. I dare say that, John. <laughs> yeah, we are proud of you. All right. Thank you thank for staying you. with us. Now, what are the glare differences and similarities between culture and tradition? Simply. Well, I, I think tradition has to do with um, is the subgroup. Tradition is the subgroup, like people may call it subculture. And the culture has to do with the entire group. Um, I, like I said uh, during the um, first part of this program, um, greeting is part of our culture. But, you know, to lie down flat is common with the Western people of Western Nigeria. So um, they are similar, but there are variations. And the variations, what you have from um, a particular group for a particular group is the tradition. But culture has to do with the entire group. Like we ask Nigeria, it's our culture to be respectful, to greet people, but the mode and how we deploy them, you know, uh, we have what is called group beliefs and subculture. So tradition more is the subculture and um, the culture we refer to has to do with the entire, you know, um, uh, ha what happens as Nigerians, for instance. Mm. So, um, you tie wrapper, you wear boban wrapper, it's subculture of Western Nigeria. Mm -hmm. You just have a top, a blouse made, maybe made with um, what they call shedder, we call brocade. You see that person, he gives the person away easily as a northern, somebody from the north. That is the culture, that's how they dress them. Um, and you see somebody tying two wrapper, particularly plain joy, you will say that this person is from River State. Mm -hmm. And so there are subculture, there are subgroups. But generally, women are known in Nigeria to tie up. I forget those of us who are in the corporate world that we wear, which we wear trousers. <laughs> mm. Well, uh, Prof, I, I'm not going to hold you to the fact that all of your examples have been uh, that Female. of females. Mm. But, uh, well, oh. we'll, we'll <laughs> I'm not jealous. Hey, I'm not jealous. No, 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 no. Okay, no. I tell you something. <laughs> uh, men, men, men from South, South, from Delta states, their cultural attire is to tie wrapper. They tie wrapper. But you know something? There is something they wear under. They wear shorts. They may wear trousers or shorts. Oh, they under, do? But they have, they, they tie wrapper. They tie wrapper <laughs> and they hold their working space. Oh, so they... that tells you that they are men. <laughs> okay, okay. So thanks and for giving they, us they an idea. They may wear the bowler hat. <laughs> You know the hats they wear from um, Western Nigeria. Mm. When you see the typical Ibadan hat mm. uh, or cap, you see the way they call it. Whether it's a girl or something, you see it has two ears like that of um, of a dog, mm. and you have the the long one that is done. They used to call it Solomon last cap. I don't know how many okay. people remember Solomon last. And you have the bowler hat. It tells you that that's resource control. This man is from the Niger Delta. But generally, well, for your outfit to be complete in Nigeria, you must have the head gear. And yes. you have what is peculiar to men in the south, 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 southwest, north, same you have for women. Well, exactly. Prof, I'm not, going, I'm, not, I'm not going to dwell on that because they're actually, they're actually my in-laws. Mm. My wife is a Shekiri, so I have to mind what I Just say. say yeah. <laughs> So, Prof, oh, uh, our, our, our resource control hat. I don't think that um, uh, we need any apologies for that. Our men wear resource control, and sometimes I also try to to don my resource control cap to tell you why. <laughs> so, Prof, quickly, could you tell us um, now if culture, from what we get, what we what we've been hearing, that, yeah. if culture is behavioral, what can be said of tradition? Hmm. Well, they, 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 
there, there are behavioral aspects of all of them. There are behavioral aspects of all of them. Um, if you say that you respect your parents and it's, it's our culture, um, it's our tradition to greet our parents, uh, you have to do it. You have to do it. You know, when you look at things like um, language, for instance, language is the culture. You have to speak the language. Mm. You have to speak the language. So the act of doing it makes it a behavior. Knowing, you may, you may be knowledgeable that this happens where I come from, but you don't do it. You, don't, you are not a participant in that culture. You just know about the culture, but you are not a participant. So it is the demonstration, the living out of those things uh, that tells us that uh, you, you are part of that culture. And that is why um, sometimes uh, it's hard for some of us because of exposure and cultures in contact, uh, you have you have gone beyond your subgroup, beyond national to the international level. But I tell you that those people they are very strong about their culture, and their laws. I, I'll put it their laws. Of course, they are not bylaws made by local government, but they are norms mm. of the way of a people. Mm. And you must, if you want to be part of them, if you want acceptability. You just have to get them from. You have to act that way. You have to behave that way. Right. So the behavioral aspect is very, very important. You know, it's like the religion that we have. For those of us who are Christians, you have to live out the life of Christ. You know, you can't just say that you're a Christian and you use your mouth to be telling everybody that you're a sure. Christian. Sure. But your life does not exemplify the life of Christ. You are, there's, there's a cult. Sure, there's a culture around each religion, and that is why people mm. talk about it as doctrine. Mm. In our traditional way, we look at it as norms, okay. you know, how we do our things, and you have to behave that way. Just imagine, you, you know, now we are modern people. In the morning, you tell your child, hello, good morning, how are you? You know, in, in typical African Nigerian culture, nobody dares remind you to do that. Mm. Once you wake <laughs> up, the first thing, you yes. go and greet. If you don't go and greet there, eh, you will be punished. True. Oh, yes. You will be punished True. for not oh, yes. being a good child. That you want your parents to be represented as people who didn't bring up their child well. So uh, you, you have to leave that culture. You need to go and pay courtesy visits to your elders when you get to the communities. Yes. You know, you, so many things that are expected of you. Mm. You don't expect them to come to you, you know, uh, and all that. But like you said, that is how it should be. That is the tradition. But with movement, Culture evolution things are changing. Mm. You know, sometimes my uh, my my late mom used to tell me that you can give birth to a king and still adore that king. So you are the mother of a king, but when you get into that place and uh, get to the palace, and um, you you have to recognize that that son is no longer the little boy that you had at home, mm. but you have to address him as the royal highness. Mm. So you have to leave this out. You have to behave it. You have to act it. Exactly, doctor. Thank you. Um, we have heard so much. Uh, last week, it was very interesting when we tried to trace the beginning of culture and um, evolution. Now, do take us through very quickly the evolution of tradition. Uh, for example, um, you know, you talked about early morning greetings. It's not, it's not compulsory anymore. It should be, but you don't, you don't um, flog a child who comes into your room and probably waiting for you to ask him or her, how, how are you? Did you sleep well? Instead of the child, first of all, telling you, good morning, mom, good morning, dad. Um, they used to tell us that when food is set before you, you don't go first to take the, the meat. I don't think if, if that, I don't know if that is part of culture or tradition, <laughs> but today we see something completely different. Please take us through the evolution of tra tradition. Well, I, I, I think the examples that you have given, they, they actually talk about how we were socialized. You know, when we're growing up, when we're growing up, you don't eat your meat or your fish until you have finished the food. Mm. The child now will just dash Straight. for the, the yes, that's the first thing. <laughs> and struggle, you don't take anything on, until your elders have taken. And you know, so you take the remnant, so to say. And, and you know, in, in the past, when we're growing up, when we're growing up, when they have to dish food for 
for your parents, particularly mm. your dad, you know, it's a special cell. You mm. know, they have to do a special one. Mm. But as I, as I was growing up, I began to question some of those things. So I wasn't surprised when my children too were questioning me. <laughs> I recall green food and nutrition in school. My, my late mother was a dietitian. She was actually, she read nutrition and dietetics, and she was the one teaching us. And they began to talk about protein, uh, bodybuilding food, and all that. So when, whenever we were uh, uh, serving people food at home, and they are bringing up portions, so I would tell my parents, I would tell my mom that, look, this one you are serving my dad. We are the children. We need the protein <laughs> more to repair our body tissues for us to grow up and all that. Education. So I, I think that education is yeah. empowering mm -hmm. and be it so rightly so if we deploy it well. And mm -hmm. that is why you and I can afford to send our children to school. But because there, you should re recognize that there are also what we refer to as harmful traditional practices. Sure. And with science, you know, discovery as people are doing things, finding out things, like I gave the example of circumcision. They found out that, you know, it's even, um, it's counterproductive. It's, you know, it's counterproductive in terms of the health of women. So things are changing and it's because of discovery findings. Now you have more researchers and we're researching it into our culture. But there are also the very positive things about our culture and about our tradition. I also know that when you talk about what we are preaching today, known as exclusive breastfeeding, mm. we have been practicing it in the past. Mm. And when we're doing it, um, Western people came and said, we're bush women. Why are we going to be exposing our uh, 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 breasts in the public, you know, uh, feeding children? And so it was fashionable to carry mother care and bottle feed, uh, feeding bottles and all of that. Uh. But we have since gone back to that thing. Government is now promoting exclusive uh, breastfeeding and saying there should be rooming. Rooming is our culture, what the Eastern people call omugwo. When you give birth, you have to stay with the baby, you know, for maybe like three months, which is 90 days. And now they're saying that exclusive breastfeeding should be minimum of uh, four months. Mm. And here you have like uh, 40 days or something, something in Western Nigeria and what have you. So these things are changing, they're evolving, they're just tagging them and putting different names. But some of them, they have their roots in our culture. Okay. And, you know, we have to recognize that. So there are the positive things about culture and tradition. And there are also the harmful traditional ones. Mm -hmm. And those are the ones we're trying to do away with. And that ties to what you're saying, to uh, what your, your, your views or your question, that this thing, um, how did it start? You know, are they changing? Yeah. The truth is that they are changing. And they are changing with science. They are changing with discovery. Mm -hmm. And um, that is why you see that there are behavioral aspects of science. There are behavioral aspects of science. Mm. If you say that I must have hygiene, you know, to prevent diseases, where is the washing of hands, mm. which is what we do culturally? I recall when I was growing up, when I was growing up, my, my father, when he wants to wash his hands, I don't know where he learned it from. You know, people were passing bow, but my dad will tell you to, you know, pour water on his hands while he's busy uh, washing, washing it, which is the right thing to do. So wow. there are the right aspects of our tradition, there are the right aspects of our culture that we can pass on, you know, and move on. But uh, by and large, it has to do with how we were socialized. Thank that you. is how uh, these things keep evolving. So for those of us me, who are in the city, what we are socializing our children with, to a large extent, we determine to the extent that they will keep our culture. And that mm. is how it keeps evolving. It keeps mm. evolving. Mm. Thank you. you. Thank you, Prof. Different. Thank you, Prof. Uh, well, it feels like you're bringing <laughs> us back to our roots. Yes. That, that's, the, that's, that's the bottom line of mm -hmm. what you just said mm -hmm. to us, that mm -hmm. we're going back to our roots. Now that we're going back to or heading towards our roots, is there anything like Nigerian tradition? We have um, <laughs> Nigerian tradition. Collectively. Yeah. Yes, collectively, you know, we used to have this thing that we call uh, African time. Mm. It's very common for you, um, particularly you, when you leave this studio now and you go, you go on stage, you tell us that all guests must be seated, you know, before X, Y, Z comes in. And mm. um, it, 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 we, we're, we're people be, they do that because people are used to this tradition of lateness that, oh, we are not going to start at that time. I recall one professor uh, in my university, Professor Lyle Lurode, he, 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 he did something on university rearmament sometime. And there was something that um, 
one vice chancellor brought, which has now become a culture, uh, Professor Dubemi was a, a former vice chancellor in our university. You know, prior to that time, they say events want to start. You find out that we may not start at that time. But that VC, if you like, come late, you meet him, he has started. Yes. So that culture, that sub culture is receding. It's receding in our institution. When it's time, it's time, and you know, people have to start. So that's part of our culture. The culture of Nigeria is that of party. We throw lavish party. You know, we are we like clothing. We we you see anything that they sell. You know, must sell in Nigeria. We like life. We like to enjoy. You know, so these are some of the uh, emerging things that we do in Nigeria. It's become part of us. It's become part of us. Okay, we are the most happy people on the <laughs> yeah. surface of the earth. You know, a research That's a few years one, ago. One, one God not had minister commissioner for happiness. happiness. No. <laughs> <laughs> So okay, we are bro. suffering and smiling. Yes. And the fella used it to, to sing a song, you know. Um, <laughs> late fella, you yes. know, we're suffering and smiling. We're very happy people. We are very resilient people. I tell you, we that's are what resilient. Keeps us alive. You know, yes. in any situation. So you can't just chicken out. True. If you're in Nigeria, you can't just chicken out. In yeah. fact, your people will change you back that you're a disgrace. Exactly. You go and throw it out. That is what we stand for. Nigerians who are tough people. Okay, and we God. can survive in any circumstance. That's the reality. Mm. We have that resilience. We are mm. very resilient and we are happy. We don't complain much. Okay, whether and, you know, that those is... things have actually impacted some of them positively because okay. no matter how things are, we survive and some of them negatively. And that is why for a very okay. long time we can tolerate bad governance. I'm glad you said negatively because I was going to ask the fact that Nigerians survive anyhow and anywhere and anyhow. Um, is that positive or negative? But you answered that. Now, with all that you have said, Prof, how can we translate this? All the good things, culture and our tradition, how can they be learned and practiced for positive impact of family and society at large? How can we practically, you know, make people learn and practice this positive um, aspects of our um, tradition and culture? Well, thank you. There are a lot of, um, let me mention about three or four socializing institutions. You have the family. The basic unit of any society is the family. And so parents must do their duties. The next socializing institution um, is the school where we send our children to. We have to be careful the type of school that we send our children to. I, I like virtues of hard work. I like virtues of honesty. And so the formative years are very critical. So we can do top-down approach. We have to do bottom-up from the family to the school, to the community, and to the churches, you know, um, where we worship, you know, the kind of things we promote, uh, who may perhaps talking about the richest person uh, that should sit at the front row. And also, when you look at how national honors are given, the national honors are not given for impact. You know, we should be looking at, you know, people who have held the right values. You and I, we do our work. And also, uh, those of us who are in the communication and media industry, we should be careful what we, we promote, what we show. You know, the kind of glamour, uh, the, the, particularly the soft sales. Mm -hmm. And when chieftaincy title is not because you have lived where you have helped your community, but because you have money. So we should be talking about the socializing institution and we should be talking about uh, family units where these things are very, very important. Mm -hmm. I, for instance, I have two children and um, one of the things I did when they were in family school was to send them to a very good school and also by God's grace, their school where they did their higher education or one is still there, it, where it's a mission school. I don't want to know, you know, the, 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 the soul administrator, the school administrator, whether you are the son of a minister or you are the son of a farmer, once you are in that school, you are treated equally. My son told me one morning that, oh, they asked them to pick dry leaves, you know, under the tree. I said, yes, it's a, you, have to keep the, you have to keep the school compound uh, clean. I yes. did it. When I was growing up, I went to public schools all my life. Mm. So there is a time you go and pick things. So nobody tells you to be dropping things for the cleaner to pick up. You know, because you know too that you will have to go and pick up that thing. Mm. So you see people drinking, driving very big cars, they throw things on the road. On the Do road. you need a uh, Buhari 
to change that or do you need no. do you need someone who is in Lagos to change that? No. So I, I think how we socialize our people will help us, you know, these positive values that we put in us, you know, in it's beyond just setting up ministries, setting up commissions, and what to do. We okay. need to go back to the roots. Absolutely. Families must do their job. If they're parents, so yes. you don't go and tell them in school, why was your child punished? The child did the wrong thing, and there are punishments, you know, listed by the school that each child should undergo. You I go know. and take it. My son comes to me and tells, I say, look, your mom, I took punishment. Mm. So next time you will not do it. That will serve as a deterrent. Sure. Mind you, I'm not promoting or advocating for cultural punishment. No, 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 because those were some of the things that sent them out from school. Mm. For instance, I can deny you, um, you may not have access to your phone, you are not likely to watch a, a, mm. a, a program that you yeah. like, or a particular movie, you know, something. We have to think of socializing. That yeah. putting your feet down for discipline at the family level, ensuring it moves to the school. Those of us in the media should be careful what we expose our okay. children to. Okay. And let the pastors or the priests Imams, let them sermonize on positive values and culture. We have so many good things that we can latch on, True. you know, uh, to move our society forward. So socialization is very critical. That is how it moves. They were handed down to our forefathers and they handed them down to us. So one of the things is we have to do is to continue to hand down some of these positive values, the positive uh, traditional um, practices, and also to discourage uh, the harmful one. That's mm. how absolutely, to, Absolutely, absolutely Prof. Mm. Um, well, I would have loved to ask you uh, one, one more question. Go well, ahead. We, we, have, we have just 30 seconds. Yes. Uh, okay. Prof, can you swing this? Now, as a nation, we've always paid lip service to unity in diversity. With so many languages, tribes, and ethnic groups in this geographical space, do you see this happening soon? In one Five seconds. <laughs> <laughs> Is it possible? <laughs> Is it possible? Yes. It, it can happen if we all agree to it. I come from the minority group, and then um, one of the things people will say, oh, why do you have to choose a particular language as against the other? I recall, I think it was part of one that brought about people being taught in their mother tongue and all that. So we must have a conscious effort at addressing this. Unity is possible if we accept one another. I know, for instance, that you have NILA, National Institute for uh, Nigerian Languages in Aba. What have they done about coming up with what belongs to us? Look at China. China is beginning to have Chinese Institute to push their culture. But we can develop our own culture. We can develop our language. I tell you something, language is very critical. If we cannot retain most of our languages, if they are going into extinction, if we are not careful, our culture and tradition, uh, particularly our tradition, will go into extinction. So national cohesion is important, but we have to work at it. No lip service. We must have a deliberate attempt from language, from clothing to culture. And if you know that on Fridays, we must wear our national dress, come and say so. So you can't tell us to wear a national dress and you go and import other things. We have to build Nigeria. Cohesion is possible. We should have love for one another. Mutual respect for our cultures and traditions. Wonderful. Wonderful. Wonderful, <laughs> Wonderful Prof. Thank you so much. We could spend the whole of the day yes. and we'll still be talking very relevant things about our tradition and our culture. Thank you, Prof. Thank you so much. This is just about the right time to say thank you. Once again, happy birthday. And um, we will thank find you, time sir. to look at that project you, you set out or uh, started out on your birthday. I hope the producer will be able to find time to do something special with you on that NGO. Thank you once again. Uh, thank you so much, Prof. I've thoroughly had, I've, I've had a ball. I have thank too. Thank you so much for your time. And I hope that uh, you'll be, we'll be there for us again. Sure. when we call you. Thank you very much for your warm wishes. We will someday really talk about the idea of idea. Okay. Great. The NGO is <laughs> called idea. Okay. And uh, uh, surely I'll be there. It's part of my responsibility, um, of a way of giving back to the society, spending my time. Thank you. Thank you, Pro. Thank you so much. Thank, thank you, Pro. Thank Enjoy you, the rest of your day. And thank you, viewers. And thank you, you do the same. Thank you so much. Now, after the break, she takes the conversation to its logical conclusion with her guests. You know who I'm talking about. We are looking at understanding African culture. And that will be with Ferro Owotomo on the lifestyle segment. Please join us again. <laughs>